Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I'd like to dive into one of the tools that I use to create content for my channel, my video editing software. Currently, I use Corel's Pinnacle Studio 26. When I made the decision to upgrade from version 25 a month ago, I couldn't find any real-world comparison between the two versions. Now that I've had a chance to edit a couple videos using version 26, I'd like to pass on my experiences to others considering the upgrade. So why don't you join me as I compare Pinnacle Studio 26 with previous versions? I really enjoy making videos. I fell in love with the whole process in 1985 while I was producing training videos for a new power plant edition. Several years later, I tried personal editing using a couple VHS tape decks with less than stellar results. In 2005, I purchased my first digital video editing software, Pinnacle Studio 10, and I was using Pinnacle Studio 19 Ultimate when I started my YouTube channel a few years ago. I learned that Pinnacle Studio has a lot of features and an excellent user interface, but it's an extremely buggy program. Early on, I could rarely finish a video without a crash, but I guess I learned which buttons not to push, so eventually I got pretty efficient. Over a year ago, I succumbed to Corel's Siren Song for improved features and enhanced functionality. I upgraded to Studio 25 Ultimate. Using keyframes for many of the functions added a lot of flexibility, but came with the costs of slower speed, more errors, and sporadic operation. Unfortunately, the new features often broke legacy features. For example, sometimes when editing a title, the scrubber would just jump to another part of the video and you'd have to drag it back to where you were originally working. And audio ducking went from functional in Studio 19 to abysmal in Studio 25. But the biggest headache to me was the laggy playback during the editing process. Editing, which I used to love, became a chore. I estimated the videos took about 25% longer to assemble using Studio 25. Well, in August of 2022, Pinnacle announced Studio 26, which was touted as having the same feature set as version 25, but with improved functionality, speed, and reliability. I didn't want to spend money to upgrade to the next version so quickly, but I realized that if I continued with version 25, I was going to lose interest and the channel would come to an end. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any reviews except from the usual corporate players, so I held my nose and jumped into Studio 26. Let's get right into my experience. This review is for version 26.1.0.238, which is the current version of Pinnacle Studio 26 at the time of this recording. I've noticed that Studio 26 has some improved functionality. The rendering engine is a little faster, about 5% faster than Studio 25. However, both are much faster than Studio 19. The proxy playback during editing is much better for Studio 26. The timeline scrubber quickly responds to start and stop, something that 25 would not do. Also, the audio waveform shows up quickly, allowing rapid synchronization of cuts with the audio. I used an audio recorder for the sound, and I can sync the sound to the video track much more quickly with 26 compared to 25. Studio 26 has markers to signal where the gaps are in the video. This flags video dropouts that will show up in the rendered video. Studio 26 does not save the screen layout like 25 does. For instance, I like to have both the source and timeline windows open at the same time. Studio 25 remembers that setting so that when you start the program, it will revert to that layout. Unfortunately, Studio 26 always reverts to a combined source and timeline window. I record some of my content using a Samsung S7 phone. This records at a variable frame rate which used to give Studio 19 and 25 fits. During a long video, the audio would invariably get out of sync by a quarter second or so, requiring a lot of effort to drag it back into place. I solved those problems by running all my S7 raw footage through Handbrake to convert it to a constant frame rate. It works, but it adds several steps to the workflow. I tried editing raw S7 footage in Studio 26. 
At first, it appeared to fix the variable frame rate audio drift problem. However, while putting together this video, I found that the problem still exists and I'll have to run my S7 footage through Handbrake before I can use it on Studio 26. The time remapping function works much better in Studio 26 than with 25. I can actually reverse a clip, something I was unable to do with Studio 19. However, that audio is muted during reverse. Pinnacle added autosave to Studio 26. Previously, if the system crashed, you had the option to pick up just a little before the error. It worked really well, and I got in the bad habit of not saving my work very often. However, with autosave, Studio 26 will save a copy of your file at user-defined intervals. That sounds good, but I had problems. Often it seems to save the error, and I almost lost several hours of work a couple times. I like a little background music to play under footage where there's no narration, much to the annoyance of several of my viewers. I just don't like dead air. The audio ducking was abysmal with Studio 25. I would have to click the control many times before it would work properly. Originally, I was disappointed that audio ducking was actually worse for Studio 26, but I think that's because of an interaction between 25 and 26 when I had both on the machine at the same time. After I removed 25 from my PC and repaired Studio 26, the audio ducking began working well again. Titles seem to work just a little better with Studio 26. I haven't had the scrubber zip off to a different title during the middle of editing yet like it used to with Studio 25. However, they get quite laggy when I add more than one line of text and sometimes they do freeze up. There's still quite a bit of improvement needed regarding title functionality in Studio 26. At first I had some trouble using masks on Studio 26. There was no problem setting up the first one, but the second one seemed to cause a crash. However, the next time I tried it, I didn't have a problem. As I mentioned earlier, I started out by having both Studio 25 and 26 installed on the machine at the same time. Because of the audio ducking problem, I removed Studio 25 and repaired Studio 26. Not only did the audio ducking problem go away, but the Studio 26 proxy playback seemed to work even better, as did the render engine. I highly suggest removing all previous versions of Pinnacle Studio before installing Studio 26. A clean install definitely improves the editing experience. Just be warned, however, that any project bins or libraries that you have set up for earlier videos will not transfer over to Studio 26 without a lot of effort. I guess I'd sum up my experience by saying that Pinnacle Studio 26 seems to work much better than Studio 25. However, I'm not a fan of the current autosave scheme. I think the old method of recovering from crashes was more reliable. I feel I need to be a little more judicious with backing up my data, at least until I gain experience with what will send Studio 26 over the edge. However, I'm happy that I completed the upgrade, since editing has become enjoyable again. Thanks for joining me today. We compared Pinnacle Studio 26 with the previous version, Studio 25. Studio 26 was touted as a more reliable version of Studio 25. I wasn't a fan of paying twice to get the functionality promised in version 25, but I understand those improvements did take a lot of effort on Corel's part. When I look at the yearly costs of other editing suites, Studio 26 is still a good deal. If you like this video, or you think someone else might, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. The more likes this video has, the more YouTube will recommend it to others. Also, please leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon!